I think, I believe you might have contemplated on the liberate model. And yes. this model we will apply, we can apply anywhere, right. anytime. <laughs> there is a verse. So will we have, we'll be talking about three and four topics today. And one of them is the liberate model. So this liberate model is basically yeah. we say satsang, and the satsang. I'm sorry, Excuse me. What do you call it? Satsang. Satsang. S A T S A N G. S A T S. S A S A N G. N G sang. Sang, satsang. Sat, satsang. Yes. Oh, or oh, satsang. Satsang. Okay. So basically, it says that satsang leads to non attachment. Non attachment leads to freedom of delusion. Premier freedom of delusion leads to calmness of the mind. And calmness of the mind, if it continues, it results into awakening to real self. So they have five words. I converted into a liberate model, huh? liberate mm -hmm. model which has more, almost a seven, uh, seven letters, and each letter represents one thing in order to understand in a modern way. Yeah. Yeah. So L means the satsang. I live in the truth. Satsang also means the company of truth. Mm -hmm. And here we say live in the truth. So we have to remember that if I do not live in truth, if I do not live in real self, then I fall into ignorance. I fall into ignorance, ignorance, impurity, impurity, attachment, and delusion. So I have to remember, I have to remind myself how long it takes you to remember it hardly matters. If you do the practice for a couple of weeks and you remember the each uh, letter of the acronym mm -hmm. and you will you will definitely get hold of it. Whenever you have anxiety, duality, oh, ask yourself, am I living in the truth or real self? No, that's why I have an anxiety. Mm -hmm. But let me investigate. That is the second letter. Investigation means what? I am asking a question. I'm asking question from where anxiety you have entered into me. From where? <laughs> what is this? What is my experience? What? Why? So you will find out that what you will find out, you will definitely find out, oh, either you are attached, you are attached to some object, situation, situation, people, or relationship. That is what the world is. That is the word. Now just think of it for a moment. I, you see your, uh, you see your mirror at the back. You have a beautiful mirror at the back, and you mm -hmm. see your mirror, and let your, and then you say, "Oh, what a beautiful mirror!" Does the mirror say to you that I'm beautiful, or you said it? That's right. I said it. <laughs> yeah, my mind said it. So it means my mind is influenced by that mirror, and mm -hmm. I gave an adjective. It's a beautiful. Now apply the same. Apply the same. Apply the same. Apply the same to a person. Oh, that person is crazy. Who said? Does that person said to you that I am crazy? Please call me crazy, or your mind has said. 
So my mind says, my mind says and creates a label first. First label, and then it it gets emotional, and then it creates an attachment. So why we investigate? Why we do why we do investigate to recognize to recognize the very attachment to recognize the very attachment with a object with a situation with a person that is why i am investigating now i am anxiety you are crazy oh i my mindset so why i investigate that is the most important point mm. so in during that investigation i realize my mind my mind is influenced influenced or dictated by the world outside it is influenced it is influenced <laughs> or dictated by the world outside if mind is not influenced will your mind move into anxiety <laughs> Will your mind move into anxiety? Answer is no. When I wake up and you wake up, just think. You see the wall, you see your bed, you see your room, you go to the restroom, you, you are seeing it and nothing influences you and you are okay. <laughs> mind, is, mind is okay. You see that? Mind is okay if if it is not influenced if it is not influenced by the world outside and one day you go to the restroom you open your tap and water is not coming oh what the heck there is a big problem i have to call the plumber who has to fix it so my so why should I be influenced by a problem? I should recognize there is a problem and let me find a solution. Are you getting it? Say, for example, our uh, your dear near neighbor is crazy. So let me keep a distance. So if she is crazy, why should I be crazy? <laughs> it's true. That is the proper investigation. So I'm thinking in that way. So I change my perception. How I change? I change my perception by thinking. My, by thinking. So what happens now? The same neighbor comes in front of you. She may be nasty. Let her be nasty. Thank you. Thank you. What do you want? You don't allow the mind to be influenced. What happens? That is the B word. Uh, that is the B letter. That you break free from the attachment. You are breaking uh, the attachment. You are breaking the attachment. Or can I say, or can I say that you are your mind is not influenced or dictated by your near neighbor let her be crazy then what so what i need i need only an awareness what i need i need only i need to be aware I only need to be self-aware. Or I can think, oh, I can think now the crazy woman is coming. So I will 
maintain my calm and peace. My calm and peace and will not be influenced by, will not be influenced by her. Now the moment your mind says this, you maintain your awareness, let her be crazy and you are relaxed. Are you understanding? That is the meaning of letter B. You break free from attachment. You have been working on managing your anxiety. You have your brain scanned a couple of times. And you, if you follow this liberate principle, I can bet you will not, you will, you will forget whether you have any anxiety or reaction or duality or a conflict in your mind at uh, in your previous life. So B, now I the moment I break the attachment, those symptoms of anxiety and reaction dissolves. That is what the E, that symptoms, that symptoms of anxiety or reaction dissolves. Our kids, in their young age, they may have said a lot of nasty things, but our mind kept smiling. It's okay, okay, son, okay, son, it's okay. It's okay. We, are, or we allow the mind not to be influenced. So the main thing is that I should not allow the mind to be influenced or dictated by any outer event. Let me perceive it first. Let me be aware of the aware of that situation event every first. So when I so what what it means? Let me maintain awareness. I have separated. The, what is that separation? I have dropped the attachment. So when I drop the attachment, I also drop the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Harris, receive a phone call. What happened? Uh, you're near and the dear one died and you're upset. And after a few minutes, again, you received a call from the same person. I'm extremely sorry. It was not your relation. It was someone else. What happens to the mind? So the mind is influenced by the outer event. So whether I have something serious coming or something pleasant coming, let me maintain my awareness minus craziness. Minus whether it's a matter of whether it's a matter of matter of pain or pleasure. I understand what I understand that the mind can be easily influenced and I will not let it influence what is going to happen. You move to E, eradicate delusion, because those symptoms of uh, anxiety and the reaction and the fear drops instantly. I gave an example of a phone. Two phone calls by the same person. One message, something happened to your near and dear ones. You are sad. Next call. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm influenced. I'm dictated by the outer event. As long as I'm dictated and influenced by the outer event, ah, I will always continue to have anxiety, stress, duality, conflict, problems, pain, pleasure, etc., etc. Et think. I'm simply saying think. If I'm wrong, challenge me. <laughs> so now you see, you have done L, live in the truth. You have investigated I. You have broken the 
that connection of the attachment by B, you E, you have eradicated the delusion, means that those symptoms and the fear have dropped. What is left now is the R, you are relaxed and calm. But continue investigating. Continue investigating. How come? How come I'm calm and relaxed? Did that calm and relaxed came? Uh, did it come from? Did it come from outside? No. It comes from within. It comes from within. I did not focus on any object. I simply have a right perception. That is what the Buddha says. If you don't have a right perception, you cannot be calm. So you, the first time you have a glimpse of, glimpse of calm, you have a glimpse of calm without doing anything. That is the meaning of living in a moment. That is the meaning of living in a moment. Okay, now that gives you a, what it A means? That gives you, that calmness gives you a. A means what? You have a glimpse of that. Definitely, calmness is within me. Huh? Peace is within me. I have to find out. Now, even if you live into that state by regular contemplation, and then what will happen? You do it for four weeks regularly. Then what is going to happen? You remember the liberate? each letter and its meaning and you have already applied in the four weeks during the day and then what happens after four weeks now anxiety comes you transcend that limitation of the anxiety t it hardly takes a fraction of a second you transcend no anxiety uh, attachment and delusion there is no attachment and delusion i'm okay thank you so you have transcended the limitation. So it means it hardly takes even a fraction of millisecond. And if that happens, you E, last word, you embody freedom. And then in that freedom, we experience the joy. We experience the joy. That is how all those great masters, even the Buddha. Buddha was stoned a hundred times when he used to visit the village and uh, people used to throw the stone. He used to get hurt. So he applied this principle. He said, oh, this is happening. Maybe my expression in the teaching may not be right. So let me go back again and see. But definitely, uh, the stone is not going to dictate my mind. He traveled throughout India for 45 years, at least seven or eight times. It means he virtually covered every village. because he transcended the limitation, because he made it a point that outer event should not influence and dictate me. He wanted to go to another village. His students, his disciples said, no, you have not to cross this forest in the night. There was a big gang leader, the decoyed, who used to cut the index finger who used to cross the forest and uh, we are the godlet, used to snatch everything. He said, no, I have decided, so I will go. So idea of a criminal or a gangster living in the forest will catch you, influenced his mind, no. He maintained that calmness and then he went into the forest, he met the guy. So I said, oh, 
the guide said, don't you know that I cut the finger and I snatch everything, then I kill the person and bury them? I know. Buddha said, I know. Then why you have come? No, I just wanted to ask a question to you. You see, he applied the liberate principle. What is the question? Do you agree that you are committing sin by killing people? Yes, I agree. Okay. Uh, why you commit the sins? Oh, I commit the, I kill the people to snatch for my livelihood. I have old parents and then I have a son and then I have a wife. Oh, very good. So first thing you agree that you commit sin? Yes. So is any of your member of the family is ready to, ready to take your sins? You see, that is investigation. And then what happened? Then he, the decoit went to his home and he asked his parents that, oh, can you, can you take a couple of my sins? Well, parents said, how come? I am not going to take your sins. You are, that is your duty. You are my son. He went to the son. Son said the same thing. Wife said the same thing. He returned. And he fell down at the feet of the Buddha. He said, nobody is ready to take my sin. They all are selfish. What should I do? I said, Buddha said, follow me. And he became one of the great masters under the Buddha. Main thing, the summary. Is the mind, in, my mind is influenced and dictated by the outer situation, event, people and relations. And it's a matter of awareness. If I live into that awareness and I do not allow the mind to be influenced or dictated by anything in the world. There is no anxiety at all. But in the beginning, we need to do the practice regularly. So liberate that principle is beautifully explained in the text that we are going to study. And that text is known as the Bhajagu Vindam. It, another name of the text is also another name of the text is hammering the delusion. There are two titles. Now see how this master has given a title, hammer the delusion. Hammer we already know, we hammer the nail and we it, the nail goes into the wall. So there the master is saying, you have to keep on thinking, contemplating, reflecting until your intellect assimilate and digest the knowledge and it goes to your mind and the mind changes the behavior and the attitude and the response. That is what the hammer, the delusion is. Are you listening? Yes. <laughs> that is hammer, the delusion. So you see the symbolic expression of hammer, the delusion? Mm -hmm. When you say, oh, hammer the delusion, should I hammer the head? No. I have to hammer by investigation, by thinking and contemplating in a right direction so that the knowledge is assimilated, digested. And when it is digested, it changes my mental behavior. Now I'm not getting going to be influenced and dictated by anything outside any event. My dad died long back in 1989, and definitely it is the same thing, you know, the social event, I rushed to my master and I was crying. My master did not pay any attention until I calmed down. So when I calmed down, so he asked me that, can you stop the death of your dad? No, I cannot stop it. So. That is the first answer, you should not cry.
second thing did you create your parents no so why should you cry so he kept on asking the question until my mind calms down and then he said it is because of the attachment and delusion why don't you why don't you your mind accepts the universal law whosoever is born has to die car is born after 100 years the car will die mm -hmm. anything we different we use the different word whatever is created is a birth and it will become uncreated that is the death in in case of the car in case of the house we use the different word just think in case of the phone oh it's outdated phone so it means you know i want to say goodbye to this phone i want to have a new phone this is a universal law whatever is created where there is a creation there is a birth growth and the death but you take it as a birth or you you take it as a death or you take it as a transformation so i have to hammer the delusion means that whatever is created will continue forever can you tell me anything whatever is created continues forever in this world anything in the world Give me any name. But then where comes the delusion? My mind constantly getting influenced by that change, what is created and it is changing. It forgets to see what is beneath the uncreated. What it means? I see only the waves are constantly moving. I forget the water. And I say, what a beautiful waves. What a beautiful waves in the Niagara Falls. It is all water. Come on. <laughs> there is nothing more than the water, nothing less than the water. <laughs> and during winter, during winter, those waves are gone. <laughs> That is the nature of the, it's a universal law. Whatever is created, the waves are created, the water is not created. Whether you have a waterfall creates a fog in the summer or it freezes down in the winter, the water is still the water. What it means by this example, the master teaches us whatever is uncreated will remain uncreated. And the created depends on the uncreated and that uncreated is your real self and the real self is of the nature of peace, happiness, love and wisdom. Mm -hmm. That is your consciousness. You cannot have any creation without its foundation on uncreated otherwise you will defy the logic of cause and effect relationship and if you defy the logic it means you fall into delusion why delusion because of attachment because of ignorance because of impurity of the mind so it means you are responsible for your sorrow and you are responsible for your suffering. So the master gives another title, Bhaj Govindam, recognize and realize the real self on which the delusion is based. You get rid of the delusion on which what is created is depends on. Drop that creation and you will find, you will recognize 
you will realize that real self that is uncreated, that is unchanging. Water is unchanging. Whether you go into the summer, but I am lost with the Niagara Falls. I, I came, I, I saw first time. <laughs> and I said, it is all water. I, I was not interested. Uh, Prina was saying, what a beauty. Yes, I said, I know, what a beauty, yes. So what a beauty means, who says? My mind. So it means my mind is influenced by the beauty. So what happens to that beauty in, in the winter? It is all the water. Mm -hmm. I have to recognize this, since it is all the water, whether it is ice, whether it is a fall, whether it is a way, it is all water. <laughs> so I that is by understanding, by investigating, by understanding, I get rid of the anxiety. Now, if just just think for a moment. Uh, anxiety, I have an anxiety. Who has an anxiety? I. So if I do not exist, where is the anxiety? <laughs> where, is the, where is the depression? So Eastern wisdom says you approach that, recognize, you approach that real self, you recognize. Realize that real self, which is unchanging, and then look at the anxiety. The moment you recognize and realize the real self, anxiety doesn't stand. Why I have an anxiety? The false I claims I have anxiety, I have tension, I have depression, I am angry, I am upset. False I. False eye is created. False eye is a creation. That is why we have today in the morning I have anxiety, in the afternoon I have a joy, in the evening I have, I'm depressed, and in the night I'm happy. You see, everything is changing. What is changing falls into creation. What is unchanging underlying one consciousness that is unchanging, that unconsciousness is me, that I am. But I feel, what I feel, I am into, I am anxiety, I am anxious. You, you, this is the false side. Why the false side? Because of the delusion. What I have to do, I have to investigate. I have to investigate such a beautiful Niagara fall. It is not Niagara fall. Water is falling. Niagara is not falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you see that? So, okay. Uh, Niagara fall, I will come into the winter. You Do you continue to fall? No. Then I will be just as snow. Also, you have changed. Okay, you have changed. So, this change depends on something that is not changing. What is that water? Okay. Uh, fall is water, ice is water, wave is water. Why to worry? Anxiety depends on the false eye, so the false eye is left. Why? Why the false eye is created? Because of the delusion and attachment. So the master, I'm just giving an introduction of this text. So he uses the two words, bhajagovindam. Govinda means recognize and realize your essence. Govinda means the essence. What is your essence? What is your essence? Can I can I understand it? Oh, can you can I experience it here and now? Yes. If consciousness is not there, can you see me? I you have to hundred percent you have correct vision minus consciousness you cannot see me <laughs> okay. consciousness is the essence if the consciousness is not present behind the mind you cannot listen to me you cannot have any perception
a person dies, we say the body has come. Person is alive, we say person has come. Okay. <laughs> that I in that person has left. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that is the consciousness. This is what Master is saying. Recognize. You can recognize here and now. I need to continue to investigate. But recognition and realization of that real self can only happen if I hammer the delusion. If I don't hammer the delusion, it is not going to happen. So both happen simultaneously. Why both happen simultaneously? How? How you say that? Can you give me an example? Yes, I can give you an example. There is a darkness in the room and you switch on. Light is there. Darkness, where the darkness is gone? No, no, let me wait and see the, whether the darkness is going slowly, step by step. It takes time when you switch on the light. <laughs> <laughs> or it simply dissolves instantly. The moment you hammer the delusion, the calmness is already there. The peace and the joy is already there. Okay. <laughs> Look at it. You know what I'm saying. Calmness is already there. Calmness already there when you when you hammered the delusion. It is not that it will go after some time, it will take some time, then your anxiety goes away. No, it goes there and then. Why it goes? So that your anxiety goes there and then. Why? Because awareness is there, right? Because, because attachment is not there. Very I have broken the attachment. I have eradicated, and then whatever is left, that is uncreated. Whatever is left is uncreated. And what is that uncreated? It is the consciousness. Before? Before it was created. How it was created? Ask yourself. With certain event of the person, mind is influenced and dictated. Then you had a thought, and then you had a delusion. <laughs> then that is expressed as anxiety. <laughs> Look at it. That is expressed as anxiety. This is what happens. You know, you, you can go to uh, the topmost doctor. It is not going to work. This is going to work if you follow the Eastern best. We are not talking of religion, cult, dogma, belief. I am not talking about hell and the heaven. We have not seen hell and heaven. So all the preachers teaches you, I will, I will take you to heaven. Or if you don't confess the sin, then you will go to the hell. So it's better to ask the preacher, have you seen hell and heaven? <laughs> We are not talking of that. Look at it. That is the way uh, this Eastern wisdom is working. So you have to listen to it again and again. And then obviously you have to also 